Is it weird that Ray Laconico's knives turned me on? So today we are going to be doing a review on the Ray Laconico Wii Knife Co. Evoke. Now this knife was approximately 250 bucks plus or minus coming in. This is a 20 CV clip point style blade. And you know, I've heard some complaints and I kind of agree with them. Ray Laconico needs his name right here. That needs to happen, but it's not. The reason this is in pieces is because full disclosure, this knife did come in with an extremely weak detent. And in the comments below, those of you that own the Evoke, please let me know how your detent was. They would, I, I'm, I'm genuinely curious because I don't normally get that from Wii and I got that here and it frustrated the hell out of me. So I did strengthen up the lock bar, breaking the lock tie on the pivot. The pivot keeps coming loose. So I said, screw it, let's take it apart. Let's clean it. Let's show you guys the guts. I'm not gonna show you the tear down or build up. And, and then we'll move on with the review. So here's the blade. Very, very nice. We got a very nice plunge grind coming in there. This is just your typical, you know, behind the scenes blade. As far as the scales go, you're not getting much special here either. And I wouldn't expect much from Ray Laconico when it comes to special. You just get awesome, right? So this does have a stainless steel lock bar insert with an over travel stop with the cut out there. That's nice. We got a little pinhole there. Now I will say if you are going to take this thing apart, this little dog bone thing right here, this thing will go flying for some reason, or you will think it's in there and it's not and it'll disappear. I had to vacuum a carpet twice to find it. That was a pain in the ass. But we do have a little backspacer right here. This is the flamed Anno version. So as far as aesthetics go, there's not much to the aesthetics. This flame Anno looks cool, but you know, the lock bar looks normal. Everything about this knife looks normal. Everything about Ray Laconico is kind of boring and elegantly awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lock tie this, put this all back together, center it up, come back to the video, and then we're going to go into the rest of the review. Action wise, it's not as, it's extremely, <laughs> it's extremely snappy once I tuned everything in but it is not as uh, drop shut. And it's kind of hard to do with these gloves. It's my first video in these gloves because people were complaining about the other black ones. So I'm trying something new, but you can see as the action, it is shake shut. Uh, I think it will get a little bit better and I'm not mad at this grease choice yet. So we will see. Part of the reason I moved the grease is because when you use oil and it actually gets on your lock bar interface that interfaces with the tank of the blade, what ends up happening is you get a galling effect or a sticking effect, which people start blaming their knives for. Oh, uh, my knife has lock stick. My knife has lock. No, dummy. You put freaking oil on the interface and it's actually causing a situation here where it does feel like lock stick. It is sticking, but it's not uh, an issue with the actual manufacturer or the knife itself. Moving on here, let's get you guys some comparisons. Well, look at that. We got the Rats 1 and Rat 2. As you can see, this is actually close in, I would say, stature to the Rat number 2, but it almost is the same length. Not almost the same length, but it's it's it feels like it's in the middle of the Rat 1 and Rat 2, to be perfectly honest. It feels more like a stature of a Rat 2 with almost the length of a Rat 1. Now, here it is next to the... Spyderco Shaman and your Kershaw Launch 11, a larger knife and a smaller knife. This is just about the same length as your Spyderco Shaman. When you compare it to the thickness of the Shaman though, it doesn't, it's nowhere near, right? If you can see here, yes, these are aftermarket scales. I can't tell you how different they are than the stock scales, but this is definitely much thinner than your Spyderco Shaman. Speaking of that, let's get some stats here. The blade stock thickness is coming in at about 125 thousandths. And this is coming in at about 0.4 inches thick. Now, perspectively put, the Benchmade Bugout is coming in at a 0.42 inches thick on the stock. So, you know, if you want to go that route, there's there's that comparison. And people do compare this to the Bugout. I've heard it a couple times now. The blade stock is going to be a little bit thicker. The Bugout's thickness is coming in at around a 90 thousands or so. This is 120 thousands, whereas the handle is going to be a little bit thinner. Taking a look at the weight here, we're coming in at 3.74 ounces, which is about two ounces heavier than the bug out. This does still feel like a lightweight knife though. So talking about overall length, your blade length is coming in at about three and a half inches with a cutting edge of about three and I'd say 3.3, whereas the overall knife is coming just over eight inches. So let's talk about this guy. This guy in particular has this DLC coating on this M390 or 20 CV blade. I believe it is 20 CV. We do have Ray Laconico's name right here, right next to all that grease, as you can see there. And 20 CV is hidden somewhere. Ah, I saw it and I don't know where they hid the 20 CV. Oh, it's stuck in the mud. It was hard to see and it's still gonna be hard to see, but right there you can see it's CPM 20 CV. So as we said before, there is an over travel stop with the stainless steel lock bar insert to prevent galling on the titanium on steel. The action is pretty darn good, even with this grease, as you can tell here. It did come perfectly centered. As I said, my only complaint when it came is that the lock bar detent strength 
was a little weak. I'm failing this thing because of the gloves, it's not the knife. You can reverse flick it, you can thumb flick it, you can front flip it, it is a front flipper, and you can roll over just real easy. That's a very cool thing. These handles are kind of boring, guys, but in Ray Laconico fashion, what else would you expect? I think the Wii Esprit was Ray Laconico's probably most interesting model, and that was still on the boring side, yet awesome. This is just neutrally ergonomic. There's no issues whatsoever. This feels good in gloves. I definitely feel like I got a handle on things. That 120,000 stick blade definitely makes me feel a little bit more secure in hand, although this tip is still extremely dainty. Now let's compare this to the Spyderco Shaman, and you can see here the Shaman definitely carries much more weight towards the tip, making it gonna be, this isn't one of those that you're gonna pry with. This is definitely a slicing style knife, and you do get this full length of the knife to do so, which is a good thing. On the other side, the pocket clip side, we do have this nice little, you know, stick looking pocket clip. There's nothing special about it, but that's what makes Ray Laconico special. He does nothing special and does it all very, very well. I really do like this dog bone post here. I love when they do this. It's, it looks elegant to me and it kind of fixes a solution on, or fixes a problem on both sides. You can actually use that as a lanyard hole and it's not in the way or disrupting the actual aesthetic of the knife, which would be a shame because this knife is elegant looking. The plunge grind is done very well in typical Wii style. You do have this forward sharpening choil, less of a choil, just kind of a cutout where the actual sharpened edge stops and a swedge that carries all the length down the blade. At the end of the day, you guys come to these damn reviews to see whether or not this knife is worth it. You're not getting much excitement, guys. You're not getting any of the internal milling. If they were to internally mill this, despite it being thin, assuming they could, they might be able to knock off half of an ounce or an ounce, which would make this kind of cool, you know, and be lighter. This part of it's probably the most exciting, to be perfectly honest. Pocket clip's kind of boring. Everything on here is pretty standard. This is just a Ray Laconico awesome design. In my previous video, I talked about the Bridgeport Knife Co. 395, which I didn't know the name of it. Maybe it's the 394, whatever. That was 120 bucks. And to be perfectly honest, it does more than this does in the handle side. You get a better looking pocket clip. They milled out the titanium on the inside. I mean, you kind of get more for the 120 bucks, except for you're not getting 20 CV or the DLC coating. So the Bridgeport Knife Co. kind of sets the bar when it comes to value for like extra stuff. For me anymore, that's that's the way I see it. Now, these screws are nice. They are titanium hardware, whereas the Bridgeport Knife Co. I don't believe it's titanium hardware, could be wrong. And they are moderately deep. So when you're working on it, it's not gonna be an issue. I think aesthetically, this knife looks fantastic. It functions fantastically. It carries. That is the A plus of the game here, guys. The carry is awesome. It's not necessarily a deep carry, but this is put in a perfect spot where this is all that's sticking out of your pocket. If that's a problem, I really don't know what line of work you're in that you can't show that sticking out of your pocket or preference, whatever. But that's probably the best thing about this is the carry. The thinness of the blade is a little bit thinner than typical Wii's from my knowledge, 120 thousandths. And it is slicey, but it's not crazy slicey because you're starting halfway through the blade coming down with this flat grind. It's hard to review knives anymore, guys, and that's why I've stopped for the most part. They're all the freaking same, and this is no different. This design spoke to me, and I really like it. So... For me, I'm happy with my purchase. For you, if you're tired of the same old damn thing and the titanium, the frame lock, the 20 CV, that's what you're getting here. There's nothing fucking exciting about this. That's it. So the design has to speak for you to make sense. If it doesn't speak to you, don't buy it. That's all I got for you guys. Stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking rest of your day. Thanks for watching, guys.